This is Mrs. Murphy, and today I'm going to go through some of the SQL queries. Um, the, I have the example posted, the SQL student database example. It has all of the data from all of the tables combined into one. And then when I created the, the code, I normalized it into three tables, a student's table, a schedule table, and the course table. And it's uh, kind of hooked together with the, the W number for the students in the schedule. And then for the courses in the schedule is uh, there's a primary foreign key of the course ID. Now I'm going to kind of show you this code and I'm just going to copy and paste everything in this box over into our online interpreter. So when you go to the online interpreter there's already some code there and you can look at that example as well. That's an employee's example and, and but it's still the SQL code and paste right over it and then kind of go through this code with you. Okay, the first thing, this is an online interpreter. It's not really a database per se, s but uh, it's a good way of giving you some experience with SQL without having to go through the trouble of installing some software on your computers. If you go further into the database class, you won't be using an online interpreter. You'll actually be using a database, but just so you know, there is a little bit of a difference. Uh, and one of those differences is uh, every time you hit run, it runs all of this code and it does not save it, whereas a database would. And so because of that, we actually have to delete all of our tables if they exist. That way it doesn't say, oh, you've got a duplicate table. And uh, so just, just so you know, it's a little different. You wouldn't have to say drop table if exists on a normal database. But that's how you would delete a table if you wanted to. Okay, so here's the create table statement for the students class. It's got a W number, first name, last name, birth year, and it specifies the W number as the primary key. These are all texts. They're var chars or var cares, however you want to pronounce it, except for the birth year. That's an int. Then we populate the table with values. Notice that any time it's a var chart, so in the 1815, the birth year is not in single quotes. Okay. So now the same goes for the courses table. Here it creates the table and then specifies there's a course ID, a class, and a teacher. Um, the course ID is an int, and then it has two var chars, and then it specifies the primary key. Then once again, you'll look, notice when, we, when it inserts all the values into the table, this is an int, so there's no single quotes, but these two have single quotes. Okay, the third table is kind of the, the most different. There's only two values in it, the W number and the course ID. So we've got a var char and int. It specifies that both of those are part of the primary key. This is a composite key. But then there's also two foreign keys. There's the W number that references the W number in the students table, and the course ID, which references the course ID in the courses table. Then it populates those with data. Now these are, uh, are is text, so it has single quotes around it. This is a number, so there's not single quotes. Okay, so if I execute this, it's not going to show anything that anything's wrong because there's no errors in it, but it's not going to show any information because all it's done is create the table. It's not until you run a query um, that anything actually happens. So let's just try some of these queries and I'll at the same time as we're doing them. How's that? And you can kind of see it happening. So this is our basic select statement, select star from students. If I execute it, it gives me the students table. Now you can change that to whatever uh, table you want to view. If you want to view the courses table, if you want to view the, uh, or, you know, any of the tables, just change that out to whichever one you want. Now, uh, you can also specify this star right here, select star from courses, represents everything. But if you want, as in the next query, we can limit that. I want to say select just the teacher in the class. And then, uh, so if I ended it right here, and it looked like that, that would be the same thing, only it would have just the teacher in the class. This order by specifies that we want to order it by teacher. Right now, the teachers are not in alphabetical order. If I use this order by, then they are. So order by just orders the, the particular column. If you wanted to order by a different column, you could just change the name of the column. Now it's ordered by class. Okay, now distinct, I'm going to show you what distinct 
does. Select distinct gets a unique field. So first of all, I'm going to get rid of it so you can kind of see what's going on. So here we have multiple teachers teaching different classes. So you'll if I put that select distinct in, then it just gets rid of any duplicates and shows an original list. Select distinct. Okay, uh, now the where clause limits the number of rows. If you remember the the select star brings everything and you could put different values in to limit the number of columns, but the where clause limits the number of rows. So right now we're just seeing everything in the courses table where the class is 10, CS 1030. So if we look at this list, there's lots more classes in there, but we're only viewing the 1030 classes. Now this one has several. We're going to limit rows and columns with this next query. So on this one, it's selecting the first name the and the birth year from the students table, but only those rows where the birth year is greater than 1900. So if I hit execute, it's just showing the first name. So it's limited the number of columns, and then it's also limited the number of rows, and it's only where birth year is greater, it's more recent. Now this one has an and in it. Remember the AND from the logic gates? It means the same thing. In this situation, it's getting everything from the student table, but only the rows where the birth year is less than 1900 and the birth year is greater values between those two rows because this has to be correct and this has to be correct in order for it to retrieve any of the data. So we see that there's only one match in this case. Now I have two more. So on this one, here's an OR. An OR clause is similar to the, the OR gate that we talked about. It's selecting everything from the courses where the class is either 1030 or 1400. So it's showing both of those classes because either this is true or this is true, it will show it. Now the last thing I want to show you is not, you're not going to see it on the test for this class, probably in the database class, but not for this class. But I do want to show you this query. This is an example of a join. A join is where we get information from both tables. So in this case, it's selecting the first name, the last name, the class, and the teacher. That's nothing new, but you'll notice that there's not a single table that has all of those fields. So here it says from well, which table? From the students table, the courses table, and the schedule table. It's getting this data from all three tables. Now every time you join a table, it takes all of the rows from one table and combines it with all the rows from another table. So what we have to do is limit this. We only want to see the data where the student's W number, the, the W number in the student's table matches up with the W number in, this in the courses table matches up with the course ID in the schedule table. Then we specify, oh, we want to order it by class and then teacher. So if I hit execute, I'm going to see first name, last name, class, teacher, but it's giving this from all of the tables. It's joined this to give us the data we want. Well, the, your homework is not going to be this complicated. This has three tables, yours only has two, but you can use this as a reference and kind of just modify this to fit your needs. All right, good luck with the homework and let me know if you have any questions.